Stumbled across this story. There's a billionaire by the name of Charlie Munger. By the way, hilarious name. This is Sounds a, like a billionaire. This is Warren Buffett's buddy and advisor and partner and whatever. Really? That's who Charlie Munger okay. is. Yeah. He looks like he's dead. He looks like he's an embalmed corpse. <laughs> I think he's getting up there. Yeah. I mean, look at him. Yeah. He's, okay. He's an elderly guy. So this is an opinion body. that I would expect to come from a guy like this. Yeah. But I need to share with you guys anyway. So the headline here in CNBC is, Stop complaining, says billionaire investor Charlie Munger. Quote, everybody's five times better off than they used to be. Okay, so let me give you some of this article here. Billionaire Charlie Munger thinks we should all be a lot happier. Munger, the longtime investment partner and friend of fellow billionaire Warren Buffett, to your point, says he doesn't understand why people today aren't more content with what they have, especially compared to harder times throughout history. Quote, People are less happy about the state of affairs than they were when things were way tougher, Munger said earlier this year at the annual meeting of the Daily Journal. Uh, the 98-year-old noted that he came of age in the 1930s when Americans everywhere were struggling. Quote, it's weird for somebody my age because I was in the middle of the Great Depression when the hardship was unbelievable. During that annual meeting, Munger complained that envy is a driving factor for too many people today. Oh Before the early 1800s, there were thousands of years where, quote, life was pretty brutal, short, limited, and what have you. There was no printing press, no air conditioning, no modern medicine, he said. If nothing else, Munger's sense of widespread envy in today's world might be right on the money. Recent studies show that roughly 75% of Americans, or 75% of people, I guess, are envious of someone else in any given year. Um, and then there's one more quote in here that I wanted to share with you because I thought it was, here, let me just do a oh, word search. Oh, into the Steven Pinker stuff, which he's the guy who's, he writes these books that are all like, actually things are amazing and perfect. Here's That's a quote. Amazing. This is something he said previously, but it's perfectly relevant to this story. And they put it in this article here. Um, Munger downplayed the effects of wealth and income inequality and claimed that the politicians were quote, the politicians who were quote, excuse me, the politicians who were screaming about it are idiots. And the quote is, screaming about it are idiots. Those people screaming about it are idiots. So anybody who discusses income and wealth inequality, who wants to talk about how, you know, rigged the system is, unfair the system is, shut the fuck up. You know, hey, we have air conditioning. You have a microwave. You have a TV, bitch. They love the TV one. So suck it up. And I heard this argument all the time back in the day on Fox Business Network too. Stuart yeah. Barney made this argument. Yeah. It's like, even the poorest people have a refrigerator. Right. Right. It's like, ooh, wow, great point, great point. I mean, very easy for someone who hasn't had to worry about money or feeding his family or making rent or, you know, working a, like, brutal dehumanizing job day in and day out to, to have this take. Very easy I think, for that person to have this take. I think he literally can't conceive of what is going on out there in the country. You know what I mean? 63% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck. Um... More than half of the country wouldn't be able to handle a $1,000 emergency. Credit card debt is at a record high. Wages are stagnant or actually falling because of rising inflation, which is brought about by uh, corporate price gouging. So he, I, I feel like what he does is he projects his life and what happened onto others. Yeah. Like, hey... Yeah, I was alive at the time when everybody was struggling with the Great Depression, but then, you know, we all sort of grew out of that and we all advanced and we're all good now, even the worst among us. And it's like, you simply just don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what it's like to be behind on your rent or not be able to pay your mortgage or get your house foreclosed on or get your car fucking repoed. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's several layers to it as well. Um, I mean, first of all, there is just the bare reality that you're laying out of like, I don't have health care. I don't know where my next meal for my kids is coming from. I don't know how I'm going to make rent. I'm struggling, you know, like I'm housing insecure. I'm not even sure I'm going to have a home next year. Like that brutal day in and day out reality. Or like I was saying, the, the brutal reality of working in some job where you're treated as less than human where, you know, nobody, they don't, your boss doesn't give a shit about you. They'll toss you out on the street if you say one, like, word against them or screw up in the tiniest way. You're subjected to all sorts of, like, security, dehumanizing security procedures and clopenings and all this stuff. So there's that just, like, brutal reality. And then there's also um, the reality of the injustice of such mass inequality. I mean, we have the worst inequality, some of the worst inequality literally in the history of the world. And so, of course, you're going to feel enraged when you see people like Charlie Munker, who basically sucked up all the wealth for themselves, looking down their nose and say, well, why don't you just do better? Why aren't you just content with what you have? 
And then there's another layer of it as well, which is like, as our society has moved into this just totally consumerist capitalist direction, where, you know, we're no longer citizens or community members or whatever, we're just consumers. That's a wholly sort of meaningless and devoid of purpose type of life. So you have people on this more existential level feeling really adrift, you know, as we come to sort of like the, the breakdown of neoliberalism without that's something to replace it in sight. So there's like an existential level here too that he clearly hasn't grappled with or thought about. That's absolutely true. So let me tell you, one of the things I uh, went back and forth on in the PBD podcast that I did, yeah. we got into an interesting exchange on the estate tax. Mm. And, you know, I made the argument that there's literally nobody better in society to tax than rich, dead people. Yes. And um, so I gave an example. I tried to stretch it to an extreme to test their commitment to this principle of yeah. like this shouldn't exist. I said, let's say Elon Musk becomes a trillionaire. He becomes the world's first trillionaire. And then let's say... Your options are let him pass all of that money, a trillion dollars off to his kids. That, or I tell you, we create a program, we tax him, and we use that money to eliminate poverty for the roughly 50,000 uh, US veterans who are homeless. What do you pick? I mean, you know what I pick. And I think, honestly, I think 95% of the country would be like, yeah. Well, who are we kidding? Of course you fucking eliminate the, the you know homelessness among U.S. veterans who fucking fought for this country, right? Yeah. He was like, no, I'd let him pass it on. Wow. Well, what he said is, 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 it, vol is it voluntary? And I said, no, this is the government stepping in and saying we're going to tax X amount. We're going to... Yeah. He was like, no, I think you should be able to pass it on to his... I mean, the, the funny thing to me is that view is so inconsistent with... Um, and to be fair, I'm, I'm not all that familiar with what their philosophy with is. With bootstrap, with the bootstrap it's, ideology. It's totally inconsistent yeah. with the, like, grind set, bootstrap, yeah. like, meritocracy, like, everyone's got to yeah. make it on their own. We're against like, welfare queens unless your dad or your mom is you, so phenomenally wealthy and you've com right. contributed literally nothing, you in which won, case you can be a welfare queen and we'll cheer it on. You won the genetic lottery. Right. And so, yeah, this whole philosophy doesn't apply to you. So let me ask a final question. This is another... Uh, thing that we talked about and we're, we just made up the numbers in, in the podcast i don't know how much she's actually worth worth but paris hilton right okay let's say 2.2 billion dollars is the hilton empire okay um how much of that should she inherit this is a question that they asked me and i sat there and i thought about it and you know obviously i'm making numbers up here like it's just intuitively what do i think is like okay i'll let you have that that's fine right yeah. the number i said was 50 million you can keep 50 million. Oh, i'd go way lower <laughs> so you let her keep what Maybe one. Maybe one million. So in other yeah. words, of the two point two billion, you know, you have to give away two point one whatever billion. Yeah. Like that. See now I think your I I I think your take is way more reasonable than the people who say no, she could keep like all keep two point two billion. Or even if people say she should keep a billion of it. It's like no, no. Because look, fifty million, you're gonna inherit fifty million. You didn't do Dickie McGee's act in your whole fucking life except suck dick on tape. And, like, come up with some fucking catchphrases and carry a shitty little dog around in a bag with you. You've contributed literally nothing. And your parents were rich, so you're part of the lucky sperm club, right. as we call it, right? Me allowing you to have $50 million is I'm being phenomenally kind to you. <laughs> Absolutely. But they looked at it like, oh, man, that's like, you know, you're being, like, authoritarian. That's not right. You know, her parents made the good decision, so she should be able to, like, be the beneficiary of that. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that's what I'm well, saying. Here's I don't... the thing, too, is I've just done way too much research and reading, not research, reading into um, how much that intergenerational wealth matters in terms of the trajectory of the society. Like if you are a wage earner trying to bootstrap, you will oh, never catch up never. with these people who have, who even get the million dollars passed down. Nope. I mean, this is one of the biggest issues in our society right now. It's not even the, like, it's, it's not even like, the different classes of wage earners, it's asset owners versus non-asset owners. And effectively, if you don't now get money passed down from mommy and daddy, you can't buy a house. You can't get yes, on that track of building. Exactly. Wealth. And so, yeah, if you have, you know, rich people just being able to endow their future generations forever into the future with their millions and millions, you're squeezing out everybody else and you're leading to like ultimately a really fucked up and unjust society with and all kinds of chaos and violence and dissatisfaction as well. And the most important point that I always come back to is what we're talking about is redistribution of wealth 
to a reasonable degree to make the floor a fair floor where you can actually have more of a meritocracy. Because yeah. the whole point is, I don't think we live in a meritocracy. I think we live in an anti-meritocracy, if anything. Yeah. And so people don't have healthcare, people don't have education, people can't go to trade school, if people have medical debt, if people have uh, you know credit card debt out the wazoo, like all of these things, it's an amalgamation of things, which makes it so like it's a hundred yard dash and your ass is at the negative 60 yard line. Whereas this asshole's kids is at the 89 yard line in the race. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but they don't see it. This person doesn't see it. it it's amazing to me how disconnected they really think they were born on third and thought they had a triple. Like yeah. this guy, you know, he, he feels like, no, that, you know, I, everything I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. They think there's like this natural order and hierarchy to the world where the cream rises to the top. And it's like, no, you fucking asshole. If Twitter has taught us anything is that these billionaires who act like they're, they're the shit and they're so special. Mm -hmm. Elon Musk posts fucking idiot 14 year old, you know, Reddit memes all day and makes an ass of himself on a regular basis. Yeah. And he doesn't know anything be, like the genius of our era or whatever. It really, it really does expose a lot. Rips the mask right off. Absolutely. So anyway, fuck this guy, Charlie Munger. That's a very weird name, Charlie, and you look like you're dead.